it's Jennifer from scrollinggrace.com. Today I'm going to do another Bible journal with me tutorial video here. So I am working on John 16:33, which says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Um, I have worked on this verse before and I'm actually going to do something ex almost exactly the same as my original um, my original post, but I'm going to change up the lettering. Um, and I did this back when I first started Bible journaling. So this is actually a really simple tutorial to do. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to basically just do that, that the same kind of thing because now I'm back to this verse. I really just love that illustration of the world. And um, I'm going to change up the lettering and whatnot. I also... If you ever end up back to a verse where you've done before, I totally don't think there's anything wrong with doing something very similar. If that had meaning to you the first time, if it still has meaning to, meaning to you, go ahead and do it. Do what is right for you and your relationship with the Lord. So, um, I have here a little printable that I created. Um, there's a black and white and a color version. Really simple little printable and I will put this up on my blog post um, that goes along with this video com for completely free, no signups or anything. Um, just head on over, you'll click the link and you can download that to your computer. Um, if you do not like covering up the words in your Bible and you want to do something like this, um, there's lots of things you could do. You could take this colored version or even take this one and color it yourself and make it like a tip in where you cut it out and add some washi tape to a part of it so that you can tip it in and out. Um, you could print it out on to sticker paper and then usually when you use the Avery Clear mailing labels you can still see the scripture through if that's something that's important. Um, you can also just of course use a part of it in the margins. So um, I hope that this just gives you an idea even if you don't want to do something exactly like what I'm going to do. Um, there's lots of things you can have fun with. So um, I have my printable, I have my Bible, I'm using my Zondervan NIV Journal of the Word Bible. I have my Kiritake Ganzaitanabi watercolors, my cup of water, and I have a size 8 round paintbrush, um, just a cheap round paintbrush. And this is actually a really simple tutorial, so we're going to have lots of fun. Um, all right. I'll put the links, oh yeah, I'll put all the links to all the um, materials that I use in the blog post that goes along with this video. All right, let's go. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and take a pencil and trace over my printable that I have here. Normally, I can see the printable lines just fine underneath the Bible page, but I had already done a Bible entry on the back side of this page, so it made it a lot harder to see through it. Um, so I just did my best to take my pencil and outline my printable. I had to kind of keep lifting my page to see where I was going, make sure I was going in the right spots. This would have been a lot easier if I had used like carbon paper or even tracing paper, um, but I didn't have those on hand, so you got to use what you got. Um, <laughs> after I trace over my lines with the pencil, I end up replacing this printable page with a blank sheet of paper. Normally, you'll, you'll see in my videos, I use the same printable page um, to protect the pages below it and keep, I just keep that there. But this time I was like a little distracted by the lines that I could see. So I decided to just remove that printable page and replace it with a blank sheet of printer paper. And that protects the pages below it and give me a nice clean surface to work on. So um, then I'm going to go ahead and use my Micron size 03 pen. And um, I just go over those pencil marks and I do that two or three times to and I kind of do it unevenly so that I get that kind of sketch effect so I'm not focusing on going over those lines perfectly because I kind of liked that look of him being a little bit off kilter and give you that um, look of it being sketched on the page <laughs> so I just go over my whole design with the pen and then I'm going to go ahead and get painting 
Oh, oh, I actually um, don't want to forget that I'm doing this first only because I know that my micro pen is waterproof. So I'm going to use watercolor for this page and I um, know that the Micron is waterproof or I could also use my Tombow Fudonosuke that I'll use later on to do my lettering. That one is also waterproof. But if you don't have a waterproof pen, you could definitely do the paint first and then go over the marks with um, a pen of your choice. Um, but I just found it a little bit easier to go over those marks first with the pen and then paint. So yeah, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just using a size 8 round paintbrush. I'm using kind of this Kelly green color and doing a base layer. And then I'll go over it with a, not over it, but I'll take a darker green color and kind of blot that in certain spots. That just kind of gives me that look of having hills and valleys type of thing. It just gives you a little more dimension, a little more interest. Um, and especially for something so simple where I could just use one green and one blue, it kind of just makes it a little um, more interesting, I guess. So I use two green colors and two blue co blue colors, but another way you could do this is just by using one color and, for instance, doing um, the base layer a lot lighter, just using a lot more water. This is kind of what I did with my blue. I used um, more water to pigment to get it this lighter color, and then you can go over it um, with the same color and just use a lot more pigment in it and that'll give you that same um, dimension look without having to have different shades of green and blue. Um, this Kiritake watercolor set that I use has all those different colors built in so it's really easy to use different colors and it's really fun. So I highly recommend this watercolor set if you're thinking of one. Um, and at this point I got a little nervous that my um, paint was a little too dark, but one thing to remember about watercolor is that it does dry a lot lighter than when it goes on. Um, side note, if you're using acrylic paints, <laughs> those dry darker than when it goes on, so it's a little opposite. But um, you can also see the lettering from the back side of my page, and I got a little nervous with that, but once it, it dries, you can't see that lettering anymore. And the back side of my page stayed just the same. So there is no bleed through on either page. It worked out just fine, and I did not prep either side of the page um, when I did my art on them. So um, I can still read the scripture underneath my art here, but. Um, and especially if I were to use dark, lighter colors, then I would very easily be able to read it. But again, I didn't um, mind too much on the, I have a few little dark blotches that it makes it a lot harder to read. But that's okay with me because I have other Bibles that I read from. And that's a personal choice. Um, so have fun with it. <laughs> All right. So I just pencil out kind of my outline of where I want my lettering to go. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my Tombow Fudonosuke brush pen and do some calligraphy or lettering. So at the top, I'm writing out, in the world, you will have trouble. And I do that in a script calligraphy. And then at the bottom, I write out, take heart, you have overcome the world. And I do that in a sans serif style. So I have blog post videos and a printable on brush pen calligraphy over my blog and then I also have one on 10 different hand lettering styles which is where I show how to do this bottom style, the sans serif, and um, a bunch of other easy hand lettering styles. So be sure to check those out especially if you are new to lettering. Um, I think this is one of the first videos on YouTube where I actually switch up the lettering styles I guess. So be sure to check those out. Um, after that, I just go ahead and add some white gel pen. I felt like I needed a, to make my uh, land part stand out a little bit more. And so I just go over those marks, or right outside of the black marks, with my white Sakura Decorates gel pen. And I felt like this was such a small addition, but it really made my painting pop. I felt like it was a really cool... Um, thing to do and I was happy I did that. So that's a fun um, little trick if you feel like your painting needs a little extra or um, you feel like your colors are a little too close together. Um, just splitting it up with a gel pen is a really fun thing to do. 
So then I go ahead on the right side of all of my letters and um, only on the downstroke. So wherever my letter is thicker on the right side, I just add a little line there and um, that acts as my little shadow. And I do that with my gold gel pen. And then I go ahead and add a couple um, stars to my land just to have some fun. <laughs> so um, that's my finished page. Be sure to check out the blog post. I'll put all the helpful links that I mentioned in this video in that post. And um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also find me on Instagram and Facebook. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yep. God bless. <laughs>